Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario TTYD. I'm excited. We are about to finally start chapter three. And we're still not in the double digits of double digits in terms of episode count. By the way, star piece behind a warp pipe over here I completely overlooked. Uh, and I think uh, there's a star piece here too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, took some time in between episodes to not only do a bonus video where I actually... Um, yeah, let me get you guys up to speed on that because um, maybe you skipped the bonus to watch it. Uh, during the bonus video, we went to the Pit of 100 Trials and I acquired the Strange Sack. This is an item that lets you carry up to 20 items total, which is going to be very helpful. And I figured the sooner I could get that, the better. And to make sure that it was fair-ish, uh, there were a few level-ups. As you can see, Mario is now a B-list star, which happens every 10 levels, you get a new rank. And the rank will determine what your stage looks like during battles, okay? Uh, before we continue with that, try to keep the pace going. Let's go all the way over here. This might be jumping the gun a little bit to get the star piece, but... Again, I, I noticed I was also looking at a star piece list for the uh, game, and I noticed I was slacking a little bit on the star pieces, and that's partially because I've been slacking on the star piece panels. My star piece panel game is a little on the slacky side, I would say. It's also a star piece behind here, but this is, like, near automatic, I would say. So in order to go to Glitzville, you need to get the ticket to the Cheap Cheap, and then you take the Cheap Blimp. This is how we're going to get the Glitzville. But yeah, bonus video, leveled up a bunch. Only upgraded badge points, because I wanted to keep the HP and flower points uh, consistent between main episodes. Don't know when the next bonus video will be, but it's probably going to be, like, after Chapter 5 or 6, in case any of you are curious. For now, though, all hands on deck because we are about to start what I think most TTYD fans would consider the best chapter in the game. And I certainly understand it because this this chapter and chapter 5 for me are honestly in contention for which is the best chapter. And it's called Of Glitz and Glory. It's a pretty good chapter name, all things considered. Especially when you see how the whole story plays out. If you, like, consider each chapter of a Paper Mario game to be, like, a smaller game within the la larger game, this chapter is one of the best at doing that. It really does feel like a pretty self-contained story. It helps that it's all going to take place on that floating arena over there. Well, it's, it's built as a floating arena, but there is going to be some stuff outside of the arena, to be fair. And here's some interesting fun facts about this chapter for me personally, and some pre-release... There was, like, pre-release speculation for TTYD on my part. And now is a pretty great time to bring it up, because I remember, even though I was only about 12 or 13 years old, depending on what part of the year, I was already starting to be internet savvy a little bit or at least as much as a 12 to 13 year old can be, and um, I'm also going to try and uh, go through Dario. My, 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 Glitzville, I've heard that the Glitz Pit is just full of brawny brawls, I must admit, the prospect of some Harley Burley gets me a touch peat. Yeah, I usually don't use, I usually don't have Flurry for the start of Chapter 3, so all this dialogue is like, Whoa, man. But, yeah, there was some pre-release speculation for TTYD, obviously. I mean, every game's gonna have speculation to an extent. But, and I still distinctly remember this even so many years later, but I remember speculating that they would have, like, some sort of an arena in Paper Mario 2, which is what... Basically, everyone was calling this game during the speculation. They didn't really start calling it the subtitle until a few months before release, I think. Or a couple months, rather. Oh, yes. Uh, so, souvenir shop, gift shop. These are pretty common when you go to places like tourist locations in real life. 12 coins for a Thunderbolt. That seems pretty pricey. Anyway, um, 
I don't really recommend buying too many items here. Uh, I do want to buy this, though, a point swap. That's a pretty interesting item. It's also only five coins, and... I don't know if it's this game or Super Mario, but there's actually some pretty interesting things you could do with Point Swap and Zesty Recipes. Now, I don't think any of them will add to your recipes, but there are some interesting things you could do. A Replicate raises your evasion, making you harder to hit. It's only a chance, so I don't think that's worth 50 coins. Uh, Power Punch, as we saw during the Chapter 2 boss fight, it can be useful. I think 15 coins is just a touch too pricey, though. 12 coins for Thunderbolt is also a little pricey because I, I think it was 10 coins at the uh, West Side Item Shop in Rogueport. 15 coins for an Earthquake, though, I actually think is pretty decent. We're actually going to buy one of these. I might even be tempted by another one, but if I do, I'll save it for off screen. Uh, actually, what are our points looking like? Oh, if we buy two more items, we can get the next thing, huh? Next, get the next thingy. Oh, all right, uh. I'll buy another Earthquake. Hey, we do have the space now with the Strange Sack. So I'll buy another Earthquake, and... Hmm. You know, I think I will buy a Super Shroom. And the combo, I get another Super Shroom. Uh, I do believe I'm going to want to store one of the Super Shrooms for future. And, yeah, looking pretty good on either. we got Gradual Syrup, which I think I'm going to try and save for, like, a boss fight or something. Because it might be better. Point Swap... Could see some shenanigans there, a couple earthquakes for some of the fights that we are surely going to be doing, you know, in a floating arena, right? But yeah, there was some speculation. I speculated, as a kid, that Paper Mario 2 would have an arena of some sort. And I don't remember how I came, came up with that idea. Maybe it was because of another game I played at the time that had something like that. You know... Now I think about it, uh, the original Kingdom Hearts game was only like a year old by that point, and that had Olympus Coliseum, you know? So it had an arena. I think maybe that's what I was thinking of, because I was really into the original Kingdom Hearts. And Kingdom Hearts too, of course, but man, I'm getting a little off topic there. Slightly, because it is an RPG, but still. Um, Alright, we want to swap the coops here, because underneath this giant obnoxious looking sign with some sort of chicken wrestler guy you get a star piece and in the chest you get a power plus p which complements the power plus we obtained from dazzle uh during the bonus e episode actually so oh yeah and the badges we obtained well the only badges of note from the pit of 100 trials in the first 50 floors would be Fire Drive and Zap Tap, because the other badges are Pity Flower, which you sell for coins, it sucks. Uh, a second Sleepy Stomp, which I think I keep just for collection's sake, but I would recommend equipping more than one of any of these stat ailment uh, badges, because I don't think it's really worth the value, per se. Um, but yeah, our badges are looking pretty good. 27 badge points is a lot to work with. Although, some of these badges can be quite pricey. So, you know, you get what you paid for. Items are looking pretty good. Let's swap back to Flurry, though, for the sake of variety and dialogue. Keep this airplane panel in mind, because it's going to be useful later on in the chapter. And let's head inside here. I, again, I think I'm slightly jumping the gun here, but let's go ahead and jump into the juice bar. Go behind here and get a star piece. There are ten star pieces to collect here in Glitzville between the gift shop area and the arena. There's also this, uh, toad, this lady toad over here. Ah, that fabulous mustache. I've seen it somewhere before. I know it. Yes, Mario. That is definitely a name I've heard somewhere before. Not a lot of dialogue there. Uh, there's also a lack of two with, like, sunglasses on the cloud. I think it's very interesting because, uh, some minor spoilers, because during the bonus episode, uh, because I went through the pit of 100 trials, you actually fight some enemies before the 50th floor that show up in chapters 3, the, our current chapter, chapter 4, chapter 5, and even a little bit of chapter 6. By the way, here's a hot dog stand. Hello, you got them all. The aroma of yawn in the air is the specialty of Litzville, uh, Mr. Homer's famous hot dogs. Only 10 coins for what will you buy? One? Actually, yes, and I'm also going to buy two more. 
you're probably wondering why I'm buying so many uh, hot dogs. Um, you're going to need at least two for an optional trouble center quest. As well as that moose cake that I cooked up. I'm pretty sure it was the last episode. If it not, it was the bonus episode. But yeah, let's check our inventory real quick. And, uh... Yeah, we have the moose cake and we have the two hot dogs. And I do believe that quest is unlocked after you complete chapter 3. You can only store up to seven more items, though. Hmm. I think we might want to make a... Try to make a withdrawal here, since we do have more space. Oh, actually, we had two super shrooms. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um... Hmm. Actually, wait, three super shrooms? How did that happen? I don't remember. Well, I mean, hey, that'll that'll hit the number, so... Ah, yes. A shroom steak. 30 HP and 10 fly points. We also did more of the Pianta Parlor, too. And, actually, that is how... By completing some optional quests at the Trouble Center, you can get access to these, these membership cards here. And you can play games... Or sorry, special card and silver card. You can play games at the Pianta Parlor that lets you get more Piantas, which are the tokens. And, oh, by the way, hot dogs recover 5 HP, 5 flower points. That's actually pretty solid. But yes, by getting cards, you unlock more items that you can get at the Pianta Parlor. And that's how you can get a second power jump, a second multi-bounce, and a second power smash, which might be helpful since we're still running with a regular hammer, so... You know, it'll cost more flower points. Um, so, while we're doing going through here, I'm probably... Oh, yeah, there's a star piece behind one of these plants. There we go. So, welcome to the Glitz Pit. It's the name of the arena here. Sorry for the delay. I really hope the pace is still good here. Uh, star panel over here. Get that. And you can actually enter the Glitz Pit through the bottom door or the top door. I usually prefer going through the top door for some reason, so... I think that's what we're gonna do. And actually, I'm gonna want to do some voice acting here. So any no, any things I any thoughts I have about the badge stacking for power jump, smash, and multi bounce? Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Correct fingers here. So again, you can have any party member here, but I, I and I know I usually don't want to voice act this, but eh, why not? Oh dear me, what a positively glorious venue! Oh, messy Mario, look there, those two brutes are about to have at each other. How about this? Oh, yeah, that's right. Ooh, I think it's about time for you to feel the rock. Oh, yeah. Ooh, man, that looked like a pretty harsh attack. I'm not going to lie. Oh, stay down, big cushion. You don't want more of this. Why'd you even show up? Huh. Yeah, you hear me talking. Wimpy, stay out of the rain. Oh, yeah, feel the bear, baby. Tell you what, do about a million push-ups. And then come see Uncle Rock Hawk. So say hello to Rock Hawk, everybody. Kind of a fan favorite TTYD character, I would say. I like Rock Hawk well enough. I'm pretty sure the dialogue is, like, inspired by wrestlers and probably Macho Man, Randy Savage, so, you know. I'll give you another world-class spanking and send you crying on to mama again. Hoo-wee, champ. That was a great A whooping. Uh, your thoughts on the match? You call that a match? Ain't there a fight out there who could challenge me? No, no one can hear me. Ain't a fighter out there that can even make me sweat. They're all a bunch of little crybabies running around in stinky diapers. You got a bone to pick. Ha! Come fight me. Bring it. And I'll take on anyone. Oh, yeah. You weaklings might as well stick to video game fighting, okay? Because I'll hurt you. Yeah, number one, baby. Rock Hawkin' the champ. <laughs> oh, crud. I, yeah, that was a lot of you-know-what to swallow there. Oh, my word. Mario, I'm not on Koof Bad's belt. Is that a crystal star? The party members will refer to this crystal star. Yes, I do believe it is. That wonderful sparkle is yet another crystal star. But such a tawdry... That's not a word you hear every day. Such a tawdry place to find it. Why would it be here of all places? Actually, that scene was shorter than I remember. Okay, so I'm not really going to read this dialogue. I just felt like doing that one because that was a pretty 
important scene, we got introduced to Rock Hawk, the champion of the Glitz Pit, everybody. And we're going to battle our way. So, going back to the badge stacking for Power Jump and Power Smash and Multi Bounce. So, there's this badge, or rather, these badges in the original Paper Mario called Mega Jump and Mega Smash. Now, in the original Paper Mario, those badges are basically beefed up versions of Power Jump and Power Smash. So, the power badges um, are two flower points to do like plus two damage of whatever the maximum damage output is for the attack. And for the in the case of the jump, it actually condenses it into one attack rather than going for the double attack, which a jump usually does, right? So the mega versions, instead of being two flower points and plus two attack, they were six flower points apiece for plus four attack. Which, I know what you're thinking, that strikes is a bad deal, right? Because instead you could just do, like, two of the power attacks in a row instead, and you'll be saving flower points. Well, one way to look at that is that you're paying flower points in order to be able to deliver that damage in one less turn. Which might still sound like a big, uh, bad deal. I, I get you, I really do. But, because of the badge stacking system in TTYD... And how it works, by the way, inside here, it's the last stand badge. Pretty hidden badge, pretty sneaky. But, basically, by stacking two, two power jumps or two power smashes in TTYD, that is how you get the mega version. And it's actually two flower points cheaper. It's, it's plus two flower points and plus two damage for every badge you stack. Actually, I think when you stack more than two, it's actually like a double, like a times two instead so while i would say that equipping two of the power badges to get the mega version in a sense is a solid deal anything more than that would just be excessive and you factor in like power plus and if you stack power plus with your jump and you get like a spike shield or something like that because it's in the game anyway who in tarnation you son and who let you in this is Grubba's office. <laughs> yeah, that's me, Grubba. And you, you're one room two. Coming in without a knock. Woo-wee. What now? Athlete, huh? You want to be a fighter? Woo-wee. That do change a thing or two, son. I always got time for an up-and-comer. <laughs> Yep, this place is packed to the gills with young fighters. All primed and rare to go. I gotta say, son, you're a bit skinny for my taste, but I'm willing to give you a shot. Yes, sirree, indeed. Now, play me straight, son. You want to live the glamorous life of a champ, don't you? Darn Skippy. I like that option. All right, all right, son. I hear where you're coming from, son. Loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of what something I was looking forward to with this chapter. This is Grubba, so yeah. I've always envisioned uh, him sounding just like the the voice actor for DDD and the dub of Kirby right back at you. But also channel him like a casino owner a bit. So, here we go. When I was just a poor pup, I didn't give a pokey's patoot for fancy big city ways. But I jumped into the world of martial arts and fought my way to fame and riches. Which rhymes with something else. And know what I realize, as I say, I say, and know what I realize, being rich and famous is diggity dang dynamite! Oh, man. <laughs> now, I, I say, I say, I can't mix it up in the rain no more, but I earned enough to set me for life. See, you read me here, son. I say, dreams do come true, if, even if they ain't yours. Exactly. Yeah, that's the key, son. Dream big, and you'll get big. That's the winner's way. <laughs> Maybe you guys should put a pin note on that, by the way. And when you make it big, you'll look back at all those small dreamers and laugh. You read me here, son. That's the spirit, chief. That's the spirit. There, let's have this little uh, walk and talk. Come on, man. Funnily enough, he says a walk and talk, but there's actually no dialogue between this and going to the next location. Grubba is now going to essentially give a tour of the Glitz Pit. And how the Glitz Pit works is that 
You st well, actually, he's going to start in reverse order. So here's the championship room. The champion's room. Now, how do you like this, Pard? Just feast your eyes. Go ahead. This is the champion's room. Isn't it a sight? Deluxe. You become champ, son, and you get the key to this room. <laughs> that ain't all, of course. That's on top of the big money and screaming fans. Yeah, no doubt about it, son. A fly yourself and a life of wealth and comfort awaits. And now we're going to go to the Major League Room. Major League Locker Room. Now, uh, here we have the Major League Locker Room. Uh, a lot of contenders here. What you think, son? What you think, huh? Not exactly uh, glamorous, but it's clean, comfortable, I say, I say. Totally sanitary, too. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I care about the fighters, darn it. And, yeah, for some reason, they kind of do a bit of it. Now, I'm sure you know this already, son, but there ain't but one world champion. Clawing your way to top and taking the belt to become a champ ain't an easy thing. But that's the point, son. Wouldn't be worth it if there weren't no challenge. I can see you got the five four two pod. You got the eye of the tiger and the bed of the... There. You're gonna be champ. I can just feel it. I ain't never been so sure about a fighter. What? Rock Hawk? I don't know. Oh, hey, uh, one other thing. You gotta sign an itty bitty, I say, I say, an itty bitty contract to be a fighter. It ain't no thing, just take a second or two of your time, just jot your name here, okay? You kinda have to sign up. I actually think if you say no, you get an option to, like, leave and do something. Dang, I probably should have done that, actually, because there's some items you can collect here that you're not gonna be able to get until way later. Oh, well. Still, I gotta say, Pod, that's a little punch of the fighters they get me. Let me see here, let me see. Bam! Woo-wee! I got it! From now on, you're gonna be the great Gonzalez! Whoo! Ain't that a beaut? Dang, if that ain't a stroke of genius! A name that good comes around once a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, everyone will soon bow before the great Gonzalez. Ha! <laughs> Make me proud, son. Just like Mario. Mario's like, what? How do you, how do you go from Mario to the Great Gonzalez? Well, now that we got the best side out of the way, uh, Jolene! 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 Could you come, uh, come in a minute, darling? God. I'm unintentionally making way too many country music references here. Yes, sir. You wish to see, wish to see me? It sure did, hon. Uh, Jolene, this is the great Guns Atlas, the newest rising star! Ha <laughs> ha! Be a peach! Hey, did you see that reference I just did right there? And take them on down to the minor league locker room already. Well, they've been building this one up for some reason. Right away, sir. Mr. Gonzalez, if you would be so kind, please follow me. Ooh, we are looking for the voice acting girl of this whole chapter. I tell you what. As you know, you are a contracted fighter now, so you must abide by some rules. First and foremost, what Mr. Grubba says goes, period. You must do what he says. Also, as per your contract, you cannot quit until Mr. Grubba releases you. Thank you for releasing me. There are many other small guidelines that I will explain as they become relevant. You just know that Jolene is just taking all this seriously and just playing everything so straight, despite the attitude of her boss. Well, here we are. This is your locker room. Yes, uh... Boy, is this a sight for sore eyes. You're starting in the minor league, of course, as you've just now started your career. If you don't like this dingy room, I suggest you work your way up through the ranks. When you're ready to fight, you just log on to this computer terminal here. Mr. Grubba will then decide who you will match up against. You will have no say in this, so why don't you try it once? Walk up to the screen and log on with A. Then pick Reserve a Match. Before we do that, though, uh, so say hello to, um, oh, I guess they're not going to do any introductions here. Yeah, 
but you can sleep in this bed to recover your HP and flower points. Uh, can't do it right now. It's kind of forced to uh, examine the GBA-looking automated map reservation system. That is a mouthful. And you can also view rankings here. Oh, well, evidently we can't know that now, so let's just reserve that match right now. And there's Grub again. Well, howdy, young Alice. Ready to get your fist dirty, huh? <laughs> there you go, son. I, I got a treat for you. I got a say, I got a treat for you. Your first battle is going to be against the Goomba Brothers. Ha! <laughs> Don't you worry about them. They'll be a piece of cake. Just mop them up, okay, son? Hey, we want to get everyone fired up, though. So appeal to the crowd at least, at least once. You got any questions about detailed rules, just ask lovely Miss Jolene, okay, son? Uh, well, good luck, pard. Okay, your battle is reserved. At this point, you just wait until security comes for you. Fighting is pretty basic. The team that drops the opponent's HP to zero first wins. If you beat an opponent who ranks above you, your ranking will go up. Then again, if you lose to a lower ranking opponent, your ranking will go down. Simply winning is not enough. When Mr. Grubba sets fight conditions, follow them. In this case, the condition is to appeal to the crowd at least once. Fairly easy. If you satisfy the condition and win, you can battle a higher ranked opponent next. If you can get your rank up to 11th, you'll get a shot at the Major League. That's about all you need to know for now. Did you understand all that? Okay, good. For now, just wait until security comes to get you, Mr. Gonzalez. Not sure why security had an uppercase S, though, but here's the security guard. Hey, yo, Gonzalez, much master. Follow me, bub. Okay, security's here to escort you to the ring. Try not to get completely destroyed out there. You'll notice, you'll notice that Jolene's role in the story will be pretty strong at first. She's probably going to fall off a little bit, and then she might make a resurgence. Consider that your only hint. If you liked my Jolene voice for some reason. Squaring off next, folks! Woo! I'm hopping hard hits! The Goomba Brothers! And a newcomer with a hankering for hammering the Great Gonzales! The Goomba Brothers have been waiting and getting all hit up for the fight. Let's check in now. <laughs> Look at these little tater tots over here. How do, Goomba Brothers? How are y'all feeling today? You ready for this fight? Ah, uh, are you kidding, man? We're always ready to bounce a fool or two. Who is this Gonzales wrecking anyway? Cocky idiot, that's who. Waiting just makes us mad. We're going to teach this tardy punk how to respect fighters with seniority. I think maybe you ought to call an ambulance for him now, just to save time later. Ooh, we Ha! Diggity dang, fight fans! Here's the great Gonzales now striding on up. I tell you, this rookie's got some guts. Striding up late like he owns the place. Woo! All right, now, Gonzales, listen up. Let me just explain the rules of the match real quick. Have a box! Hook. Yeah, so the Goomba Brothers, uh, they don't play nice. And to be fair, that attack can be pretty hard to super guard because of how it quickly just comes out of nowhere. What sort of base cowards attack for the match officially begins? Honestly. Come on, Mario, darling. We shan't lose the low lights. Ah, uh, quit crying, will ya? That was just a little welcome gift for the rookie. Where's our thank you? Yeah, these guys are crying. So, you do need to fulfill Grubba's condition in every one of these fights, even if it's not in your favor. Thankfully, uh, we have this, uh, this move called Gale Force, where you just blow away enemies that probably won't give us star points to begin with, because they are so weak. Unfortunately, we missed <laughs> one. Not that it matters very much. We're just gonna super guard, and you know what? Been a while since we've seen Flurry Body Slam, so why don't we finish this battle off with a bang? And I don't think I had a chance to show off the stylish for that either. It's a pretty good one. So, yeah, you do get the one pity start point, even if the enemies get zero. That's pretty good. Uh, the Great Gonzalez wins! Tell me, son, what was this first taste of victory like? Ah, uh, that fight. What a joke. I'm 
I'll tell you what I just saw, folks. Oh, whoop it. Ha! This kid's got skills. Hell, the moxie. We got ourselves a new hero here. Let's get for him, folks. Yeah, the great goons, Alice. Woo-wee! Man, I know. I'm, I'm just hyping this up, but honestly, I was looking forward. To, I was mostly looking for this chapter for the silly voice acting. Well, Guns Alice, that fight wasn't a total loss. But listen, son, listen, son. Fighters got to know, got to play to the crowd, I say. You know, pump them up more. I'm hoping, hoping you'll get more razzle-dazzle next time. Huh? We understand each other. And good. Uh, I'll be on my way. Uh, Mr. Lee here will give you your flight money. Ha, ha, ha. See ya. Oh, God. Here's your flight money, Mr. Gonzalez. Now, I'm going to voice act that dialogue one time, but she's literally going to say that every time you finish a match. The next fight will not be set up until you select Reserve a Match on the Terminal. You can also check your current ranking on the Terminal screen. Feel free to do whatever you like until your next fight. You have a nice day, Mr. Gonzalez. So yeah, she's going to keep repeating like to the same two or three text bubbles in between most fights. Yo, Rook, how was your first fight, dog? I'm King K, man. Just like Bush League, just a Bush League scrub like you. Pretty sure this is where the YouTuber King K got his name from. So there you go. Good meeting you, man. You look like a stand-up dude. I think I can hang with you. Hey, so, why don't you meet the gang, huh? This guy's here is Master Crash. Well, nice to meet you. Huh? Uh, well... Now that we've gotten to know each other, I'll give you advice, Bob. As Miss Jolene was saying, you better, Bob, obey Mr. Grubb's conditions. If you clear the conditions and win, you get to fight higher ranked foes, Bob. If you can't clear them, you, bomb, end up battling a lower, lower ranked fighter, Bob. You can't climb the Bob, ranks fighting the bottom of the barrel, Bob. Bob. Yeah, my man's got, you know, some speech issues. But he's got good advice sometimes. Not just sometimes, Bob. Advice is always useful. Bob, Bob. Right, man. Whatever. Anyway, this lean machine over here is Bandy Andy. Yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm not here too often. But if you see me around, say hi. Oh, yeah. If you sleep in the bed over there... Your HP and flight points will fully recover. <laughs> it's not like the cushy bed in the champ's room, though. It doesn't refill star power. Okay, cool. And this last guy with the ant with the sweet purple kicks is known as Clefter. Right. Clefter, no like to make friend with mustache. Easy there, Clef dog. Dude ain't the friendliest guy. But you get used to him. Yeah, he also doesn't say much. Anyway, that's the core minor league crew, man. You need something? Ask us. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. You and me gotta eventually square off. So good luck, man. Yeah. On that note, why don't we swap to Goombella for no particular reason? We have 11 flower points. I think that's gonna be pretty good. Let's uh, just jump right into the next fight, why don't we? Gee, I wonder who it's gonna be. Well, hi! Howdy, Gonzalez, fixing for a fight, huh? Well, alrighty then, let me just see here. Your next opponent will be rank 18 in the Blitz Pit, the KP Coopers. Now listen, son, in this battle, I want you to avoid switching partners out. Oh, yeah, that can be arranged. Gotta go who brung you. Dang it. <laughs> that word brung. That word actually has a bit of a funny history with me and my brother, but... That might be a story for another time. Fight to the end, side by side. Now that's drama. Now get in there and stand by your pod. <laughs> hey, dog. Looks like your next match is against me. Good luck, man. To the both of us. Yeah, second match. And we already got to fight supposedly like the leader of the minor league, right? But he's actually like the second opponent. By the way, there's like ten matches. There's like ten fights in the minor league, or 11, something like that. It's quite a few. Quite a few. Not all of them are represented in the locker room, but 
some of them are. And this is going to be one particular example. For our next battle, we got the Merciless Executioner, the Great Gonzalez, and the Shell Machines of Doom. Yeah, a fight to the finish with the KP Coots. And we aren't going to lose the scrubs like you. Meet my, meet my peeps, Gonzalez. I told you we were going to square off, and now it's on. Get yourself ready to battle! And again, there's going to be a lot of repetition with Grubba's dialogue. Don't expect me to voice act it every single time. Might make some an exception, though. Anyways, we can't change our partner out, but... Considering we're fighting against Koopa enemies, Goombella is actually advantageous anyway. So, KP Koopas, and by expansion... Extension, sorry. KP Paratroopas are basically just the Glitzville exclusive versions of the Koopa Troopa enemies from Chapter 1. They actually have the exact same stats, it's just a color change. For some reason, I, I don't know. Like, couldn't they have at least buffed up their attack by one, or you know, something like that? I don't know. At any rate, because we have Super Boots and the Power Plus, we can finish off each enemy with one attack. It doesn't even matter if we get attacked. Like, I'm not really going to sweat very much. So, we are going to tattle, you know, KP Koopa. And I think this title log will mention something about uh, King K. Koopa is Koopa's slightly different color. Max Series 4. Looks like its abilities are just like any Koopa, so he ought to be a piece of cake. Don't go easy just because you know King K, Mario. That's what friends are for. Yeah, basically. But, you know... Oh yeah, Quake Hammer with Power Plus is only going to do three. Actually, I'm fine with this. Because you basically have infinite flower points thanks to the bed. So, you know. Ah, the fog. Failed to mention until now, but as you can see, when you become a B-list star, the curtain changes from a dingy brown to a much more pleasing to the eyes uh, blue color. It also brings the potential of fog showing up during a match. And that's annoying. We got ourselves a winner! The Great Gonzalez! See? No biggie. There you go. I think I've changed the Goombell voice like three times now. Again, I'm not going to voice Jolene's dialogue unless she actually has something new to say. Not just the same thing over and over. Oh, well, I guess the part where she says, Now if you'll excuse me, I'll be going. Is technically new, but again, it's repetitive. Can't do much about that. If there, okay, let me do this. Hey, way to hand out a beatdown out there, man. You beat me straight up. Could swing the other way next time, though. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, if there is one flaw of this chapter, and it's not even really a big flaw because this chapter technically does not have any backtracking, or at least any egregious backtracking. So that's already going to be a point in its favor for a lot of us TTYD fans. But, the only, like, kind of, sort of flaw with this game, or not the game, but the chapter, I should say, is that it's a little repetitive and it can go on for a while because this is basically all you do in this chapter. It's fight after fight after fight. And... Think about it this way, and I've mentioned this several times, but a violence battle, avoid using flower points. That's actually rough, because um, fighting pokies without flower points is actually pretty rough. That's actually going to be pretty hard. I, I actually managed to tattle a pokey in the pit of 100 trials, so I'm going to go in with Koops instead of Goombella. Should help a lot. But, yeah, Chapter 3, because it's mostly fights, it does make it a longer chapter and one that could feel like it slogs on for a bit. But because this chapter highlights the best th aspect of the game, the battle system, I believe that, combined with the characters, I would say the characters and the story of this chapter in particular are also pretty good. That helps a lot. Uh, the Spike Terror Triplets! Yep, a fight to the finish with the Pokey Triplets! Um, okay, we can do this. Eh, hey, go ahead. Touch us. It won't hurt too much. Get yourself ready 
to battle! Anyway, um, yeah, so that's why I said it's like kind of a flaw, but not really. Also, I just realized we can't use flower points, but we can use, um, use star power. Unfortunately, the bed won't recover your star power, but you can easily do that with attack, stylish attacks and appealing to the crowd and whatnot. So we're just going to do this and try to go through this as quickly as possible. I will not be cutting out any of these fights because these are all mandatory, even though if we, if we, even if we've seen the enemy or enemy types before, I'm leaving all of these in for, this, for the reason that they are mandatory because, again, highlighting the best part of the game, the battle system which you're going to get a really big dose of during this chapter. For the better. I can't even say for the worse, because hey, the more fights you can do, the better. Because you get to enjoy the meat and potatoes of the game, and that is why most of us TTYD fans consider this to be the best chapter in the game. And why one of the worst chapters in the game is a chapter that doesn't have as much fighting. <laughs> it's really as simple as that, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. Pretty solid way to make money, too, because now we're getting four coins per battle, which is a solid way to get money. I don't know. I feel like maybe in some cases we might get more money, but it depends. Hey, what's cracking, G-Man? You just finished beating down some poor fools or what? You looking good, man. The old King K wouldn't mind a little bit of your look, man. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, I believe that's... I, was, oh, dang. Oh, I should have done that. How many times do I have to tell you? That room is absolutely off limits. If you want to remain on our fight roster, you must follow the rules. And don't think I haven't noticed you following me. Stop that too. It's creepy. If you don't obey the rules, we will ban you from the Glitz Pit. Understood? Yeah, that was it. I thought it was a security guard at first. Again, dude. Man, you just a magnet for trouble. <laughs> Sorry, King K. Didn't mean to bring Queen Nag in here. Ah, don't sweat it, B. Money. Jolene can take that toot and shove it up her nose or something. Why are you always chasing that girl anyway, man? You got a little thing for Shut up, Kay! <laughs> now, if you folks will fire me, uh, I must be off. Yeah, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of Bandy Andy. Well, we didn't lose any HP or flower points, though, so I guess we're good to continue. Let's do have Goombella on the side, though, just in case, because you never know. So, yeah. Let's see, our next poet's going to be the Dead Bones. Okay, and the condition is, let the enemy damage you three times. These conditions are always so annoying, because you basically have to skip a turn. But okay, I guess we'll, um, actually we don't need Coos, we can use Quake Hammer. But because we have to let the enemy damage us three times, you know, this fight could be a bit of a slog. So, it's also a really fillery fight in general, since we're fighting only enemies from Chapter 1, but that's kind of the point of the minor league. It's supposed to be easy. For our next battle, we got the Merciless Executioner, the Great Gonzalez, and the Bone Banging Rockers. Yeah! Fight to the finish with the dead bones. Come on, Mario. Let's get this over with. They're gonna take the skin off your bones. Get yourself ready to do battle! Take a drink every time I say that. Even if you... A dull bones with an ice storm? Oh, great. The least we can do is that we can defend, and we're going to have Mario defend. I'm actually going to have Goombella appeal, though, so we can get some star points. And the dull bones doesn't use the ice storm. Good. One, two, three. Okay. We'll finish this off real quick. Real quick, like with the Quake Hammer. Boom! You love to see it. I say, you know, Quake Hammer slightly more expensive than it was in the original Paper Mario, but it's still a good badge. Still a good badge indeed. Yep. I don't know what to tell you, but um, 
Yeah, so going back to something I was saying earlier about the Mega Powers, that if you want Mega Jump, Mega Smash, you got to equip two of the Power version in TTYD, and you get it for a cheaper cost than the original Paper Mario. So, in a way, the Mega Badges were buffed, but Power Quake and Quake Hammer suffered. But, to be fair, those badges could get pretty busted in the original Paper Mario. Because it's because of the fact that the damage they deal is piercing, and you combine that with Power Plus badges, yeah, it's gonna be pretty busted. Man, I heard you just knocked some blocks off. Not bad, Double G Dog. You're the real deal, man. The realest I ever seen. Keep busting heads. And if anyone gives you lip, you just tell them King K said the back it up. Piss out! Ah, that hurts! Oh, the humanity! Ah, my foot! I feel like that was a gigantic missed opportunity to say my leg instead. Because this game did come out when Spongebob was still like pretty popular and still going through the original seasons and the movie. Matter of fact, I think this game actually came out the month before the movie. Big missed opportunity there. Whoa, sounds like some poor sucker just earned himself a trip to the hospital. Hey man, this is a brutal sport sometimes, you know? This stuff happens. I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, we lost a little bit of HP and a little bit of flower points, so I think this is a pretty justified opportunity to use the bed here. Actually, the bed will come in handy for, like, splitting up the episodes, too. So maybe, uh, I'm gonna try and not talk if I have to sleep on a bed, just in case we keep the consistency of this series so far. Oh boy, howdy, good, Dallas. Ah, we are right here. Let's just see here. Your next opponent. Rank 15, Spike Storm. <laughs> now listen, son. In this battle, I want you to avoid using your... Oh, my God. Are you serious? Avoid using the jump? Oh, boy. Well, there's some good news here. The good news is that I think we can... This is another fight we can just do with the Earth Tremor. You're going to want to bring Goombella into this fight, and you will see why. It's mostly because of a tattle. So, let's talk to security. Let's get this over with, because I would say this is one of the more annoying fights in the minor league. So, yeah, we're going to fight a Lakitu and two Spinies. For our next battle, we got the Messless Executioner, the Great Gonzalez, and the Midnight Spike Bahamas. Yeah, the fight to the finish with Spike Storm. Come on, Mario. Let's get this over with. We are gonna spike mommy into submission, Lux. Get yourself ready to battle! Oh, boy. Alright, so we have one Lakitu and two Spinies. Thankfully, Lakitus do show up in the Pit of 100 Trials, and we took care of that title during that bonus episode. So we're gonna title the Spiny because... Unless the Spiny spawns at the start of the battle, you would otherwise have to wait for the Lakitu to spawn a Spiny to get the Tattle. So this is actually one of the more annoying Tattles to get in the game. And by the way, all of its stats are three. So if you ever struggle to remember the spi a Spiny's stats in TTYD, just remember the number three. Not the number four. Or the number five, but maybe you want to keep that in mind or... Uh, a different variation of Spiny that may or may not be exclusive to the Pit of 100 Trials. We'll say that much. Jumping on him is just plain stupid. So to be fair, Grubba saying not to use your jump is helpful against the Spinies. But we don't care about that. We're just going to use the Earth Tremor. Might bite me in the butt since we can't recover the star points. But you know what? Gonna risk it anyway. Forget about it. Now, Earth Tremor goes up to 6, but the max HP in this enemy squad is 5. That's what the Lakitu has. I met, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this during the uh, bonus episode, but Lakitu's, and to a lesser extent, Spinies have seen a gigantic fall from grace from the original Paper Mario, where they were like a Chapter 6 enemy, or Chapter 6 enemies, and they just bring the Lakitu down to early Chapter 3. Less than half of their HP... One less attack is like, man. Makes, makes you think uh, there might be a second variation of Lakitu you fight later in the story. It's also exclusive to the Pit of Hunter Trials. 
Sorry to break your heart, Flaggy Two fans. Uh, yeah, it's pretty slim pickings. It's pretty funny every time I say that, but I'm not going to say why. Anyway, King K usually has some pep talk for you after every fight, but this starts to wane off eventually. Hey man, check this. I heard the hot dog stand outside is getting a new menu item. Yeah, sounds like it's some crazy hot dog made with an egg from a southern island. Could be Thousand Island, you know. Some fool was even saying the hot dog will help you win fights. You ought to snack out on one. To be fair, you know, a clutch 5 HP, 5 flower point recovery. Especially in a point in the game where your stats maybe look like this. To recover a third of your stats in one item is for 10 coins. It's not terrible. Not terrible in the slightest, I would say. So the reason I'm not jump cutting is because we got to fight through a crowd over here. And actually, there's something fun you can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Flurry out. You can use Gale Force to blow away the paparazzi over here. All these uh, fans of Rock Hawk. Oh, hey, look at that. That's a familiar face. Uh, hold on, I think I did that wrong. Well, well, Mr. Mustache. So you're a fighter now. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose I'll cheer you from the shadows, my sweet. Yeah, Miss Mouse is just here for some reason. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be the last time we see her for a minute, though. Yeah, for some reason, the Flurry's Gale Force is not working as well as it should. Maybe there's like a source that these uh, fans flock to. But yeah, you just sit here and use Gale Force to blow away... All of the fans, and let's see what Rockhawk says first. How <laughs> everyone wants a piece of the rock. It's a, it's a tough life. Here's a little free advice. Try to be me. Oh, yeah, because everyone loves to rock. And I'm pretty sure you get some different dialogue if you manage to shake off all of the fans and then talk to Rockhawk again. You'll notice that the sprites for all of the fans are a little bit more uh, lower quality than the NPCs that actually stick around, as it were. Like, you could compare the quality of those sprites to, you know, Rock Hog. Ah, everyone wants a piece of the rock. Well, I, oh, I guess the dialogue stays the same. Hmm. I could, oh, there was one behind him. Okay. Hey, you, that ain't cool. Don't beat on my fans just because you ain't got none. So there you go. That's a little exclusive dialogue for you guys. Hope you enjoy that. I think it only added like 30 seconds to the runtime. No, bad. So very bad. Behave yourself, egg. <laughs> yeah, there's Hoggle. That's my impression of a Hoggle. <laughs> there you go. No, bad. Come back. Here, my important egg escaped. Somebody catch it. So I'm not sure how exactly to make this sequence go by quicker. I just kind of just, you just keep following this egg with three different colored spots, which I think is pretty interesting. And eventually, the egg should give up, and it'll like, cower off to the top of the hot dog stand, as it were. Yeah, there you go. That didn't take too long, son. In my experience, that seems to be random. Most awfully bad. Come down from there, bad egg. How am I supposed to get it now? Fly there! You! Don't just stand there with your mustache. Find a way to get up there! Well, uh, remember how I mentioned the airplane panel a while ago? Yeah, that might be your best bet to get up there. So, yeah, why don't we do just that? Alright, so, let's just uh, go back to where we were with the airplane panel. And, ew. And you know what? Let's swap in Goombella for the dialogue we're about to have. I think I like her dialogue the most. Could have done Flurry to potentially get dialogue I don't usually see, but I'm trying to think about you guys as well as myself. Huh? Did you hear that, Mario? You want us to help you, little Eggy Waggy? It's so adorable. What should we do, Mario? Let there be hot dogs! Come on, Mario, that's just tasteless, seriously. Don't scare the little guy. Try not to be so childish, will you? There's no choice here. We'll let him go. Is that okay with you too, Mr. Hot Dog Stand guy? <coughs> oh, fine. Most people don't like eating stuff that jumps all over the place anyway. 
Awesome! Did you hear that, little Eggy Waggy? You're free! See you around! Huh? What is it now, Eggy? You want to follow us? Is that it? I'm pretty sure our little buddy here wants to hang out with us. Do we let him? Okay, Eggy follows. You hear that, little guy? Just make sure not to get in our way, though, okay? Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good part, part to take a little intermission on my end, and, uh, we will reconvene back at the, uh, minor league locker room. Before that, let me check the email. Oh. It's RDM issue 2. I need to remove my subscription to that. 